Okay, so in the last videos, we covered rate, rhythm, and axis. So now we're going to talk about intervals. So this really means the space between the various different complexes. So let's first review a couple things that we talked about previously. One large box is 200 milliseconds, and one small box is 40 milliseconds. Since we'll be counting time, that's what we need to know. And then, of course, the various parts of the uh, morphology there. There's the P, here's the QRS complex, and then finally the T wave. And then here's another one, another P, another QRS, and the other T wave just fell off the screen here. But you can see that there's one over here. So we're going to be looking at a couple of different intervals. The first is from the beginning of the P to the R wave, and this is called the PR interval. And then the length of the QRS complex from uh, all the way through, that's our QRS interval. And finally, the distance from the Q to the T wave, that's the QT interval. And so I wanted to throw some numbers up here uh, that we're going to be using for what are the normal ranges. So let's start with the PR interval. So you'll remember the way that the impulse starts is it starts in the SA node, and then it propagates down through the atrium as it does it depolarizes the entire ventric the entire atrium and that atrial depolarization is represented on the EKG by the P wave and once the AV node uh, gets activated there's a little pause built into this thing and after that slight delay then the conduction is conducted through the various bundles here in the ventricles and so this ventricular depolarization we know then is represented by the QRS. So the PR interval, it represents the time between and including the atrial depolarization and the ventricular depolarization. So that includes the time it takes to go through here as well as that pause in the AV node. And that is equal to 120 to 200 milliseconds usually. And we can remember that one big box is 200 milliseconds, so it should be uh, between three small boxes, which is 120, and five small boxes, or one big box, which is 200 milliseconds. So let's count on uh, this EKG how many we got. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven is obviously greater than five, and that's uh, seven small boxes, and we know that each small box is 40 milliseconds. So that equals 280 milliseconds. So obviously, this has a large PR interval. And what does that mean? Well, it means that something is not, that is, is extending that delay in here. There's a block here in this AV node that's not letting you get through. And so when the PR interval is large like that, this is called a first degree AV block. So first degree AV block, is it possible to get other kind of AV blocks? Absolutely, let's take a look at some. So a first degree AV block has a PR greater than 200 milliseconds. Now, there are also second degree AV blocks, but there's actually two types. And these are named after some guy named Woldemar Mobitz. And so there's Mobitz 1 and Mobitz 2, but there are other names for these as well. Uh, type 1 is called a Wenkebach, and type 2 is called a Hay, and those are named after two other dudes. So let's look at the Mobitz type 1 first, the Wenkebach. And what you're going to see here, let's first mark off all the P's. So what is this one here? There's a P, 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 and there's a P. And then I'm going to use a little red mark to mark all the QRSs. So we got one there, and there, and there there and there. And the pattern that you're going to see here is that this PR interval with each beat is going to get a little bit longer each time. It gets a little bit longer with each beat until finally you drop a beat. There's no QRS here. And then you get another P and we start the process over with it getting longer and longer each time. And so the P's mark out pretty regularly, as you can see. But what happens is that R gets a little bit farther and farther and farther and farther from each one until you finally drop one. And so Mobitz type 1 is usually caused by some disease of the AV node. So I like to think of it as it gets longer and longer. Oops. And 
longer until you finally drop one and it starts over and so again it gets longer and longer and longer until you drop one until you drop one so that's how I remember that that's wanky buck it gets longer and longer and longer until you drop one that's Mobitz 1 so now let's look at Mobitz type 2 and remember that we said a Mobitz type 1 was disease of the AV node uh, Mobitz type 2 tends to be disease of the conduction system of the Hisperkinji system and so this is an example of the Mobitz 2 or the hay. So let's do the same thing we did here on the previous one. Let's first mark all the P's on this one. P, P, P. We'll mark all of them that we find here. And there we go. And then I'll use a red mark to mark off all the QRSs. So we got one there, 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 and over there. And what you're going to see here is that the Q, the PR interval is actually really not changing, right, in all of these. But what you're going to see is you have a PQRS skipped one, PQRS, PQRS skip one, one, two, skip, one, two, skip. So that's what we got. We have, we got two, and then we skip one. So we have three P's for every two QRSs. So you could characterize this as a 3 to 2, modes type 2. Another way that I've also seen this done is that you have two conducted P's for every one not conducted P. And so that would be a 2 to 1 block. So however you want to call it. Uh, but you can see here the main features are that this QRS, or this PR interval is staying the same but eventually you drop one, right? So you have QR, QRS, QRS, missed one, QRS, QRS, missed one. And so the way I remember this is that the, you got the, the two here, right, in this ratio. So that's why it's a Mobitz type two. And so this is the Mobitz type two where you're going to have a P for a QRS, a P for a QRS, and a P without a QRS where you skip one. And so this is going to have some sort of ratio of P's to QRSs, or you could say of of uh, conducted P's to non-conducted P's. And so that's our Mobitz type 2. And the danger with the Mobitz type 2 is that it can quickly degenerate into a third degree AV block. So let's take a look at a third degree block. So let's do like we did with the last one. Let's, let's mark off all the P's here. So there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Um, that's probably it there, there, and then let's mark off all the QRSs with a little red mark there, 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 uh, there, there, there. Okay, so what's happening here? It's even different. So there's, it looks like there's a very short PR here, and looks like there's almost none there, and then this one's huge all of a sudden, and this one is gigantic, and that one's big. Uh, but really what's happening here is they are not related at all. They're all going to their own rhythm. The P is doing its own thing, so you can see every time it beats, boom, 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 boom. There's probably one inside there that we missed, boom. Probably one inside there that we missed, boom, boom. I bet that's actually the P, boom. And so you can see this is pretty regular here between these, right? Boom, boom. All these are pretty regularly spaced. It means the P is doing its own thing. And the QRSs are also pretty regularly spaced out. So what's happening? The SA node is firing, and it's depolarizing the ventricles with every P, but uh, they are not getting conducted to the AV node. They're completely blocked here. And so the AV node has its own automaticity. It, it's, it's firing on its own. It's doing its own thing. So you can see. Now the SA node is doing its own thing and the AV node is doing its own thing. They each have their own independent rhythm. And so this is called a complete heart block. And you can see that this is even pretty bradycardic here, right? And we can say that would be 300, 150, 175, uh, 60, 50, 40. It's probably in the 30s this heart rate. So this person may even be hypotensive. So this can quickly degenerate. This person needs a pacemaker. 
and probably a dual chamber pace dual chamber pacemaker so that it can coordinate the AV the atrial and the ventricular firing so for complete heart block we know that the P's and the QRS's both have their own separate rhythm there are two separate rhythms and so this concludes the video on uh, intervals and we only looked at one interval here the PR interval and we didn't even look at all of it yet we talked about when the PR is too long, but what if it's too short? Remember, it's got a lower limit there, too, 120. What if it's shorter than that? Let's look at that real quickly on this, then we'll go. Uh, and so you could see this EKG. Here's the P, and then here's the QRS. And so let's measure how many boxes are in between. And I get about two, maybe a little bit more than two. So I'm going to guess that's probably a little bit over 80, so let's say 90 milliseconds. So that's too small. What do you do when the PR is too small? That means something is speeding it up. There's some other conduction thing allowing the ventricles to depolarize faster. And what is that? That other conduction pathway? Well, here, it's Wolf-Parkinson-White, WPW. And that is known for this little delta wave here, this little extra fast uh, uh, repolarization there. So here again we have our SA and our AV node, and we know when the SA node fires it sends signals through here and there's a little delay in the SA node, and, but maybe there's another way it gets through, maybe there's another bundle here, the bundle of Kent, and that allows us to get this thing initiated much faster. And so that's what that slurring represents, that's why the PR interval is shorter. So a short PR, think Wolf, Parkinson, White. All right, we'll see you in the next video.